Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about the Del Bello Pantera 100 Flex Ski Boot. This is the ski boot that I've used for the last season. Uh, a bunch of trips, a bunch of wear. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about purchasing this boot and this is going to help you make that decision. If you stick around to the very end of the video, I'm going to tell you the story, the conversation I had with my boot fitter about this particular boot, about this design, and what I'm going to do for the next season. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first of all, the flex of this boot is 100, hence the name, you know, the, the Pantera 100. The Pantera line comes in different levels of flex all the way up to 130. So if you're a little bit more advanced skier, or maybe a little bit heavier or taller, or just like a heavier flex or stronger flex. You can do that if you like this boot, that's not a problem. Also, I think there's some adjustments you can do to uh, marginally increase or decrease the flex. Don't quote me on that, I have not messed around with that at all. But in general, I find that the flex on this boot is about a medium. Every ski boot manufacturer is gonna have a flex rating and none of them are consistent. So 100 with this is gonna be different than 100 with the Lang or 100 and some other like Atomic or whatever else it is, right? So just understand that, that within the same manufacturer, you're going to be able to kind of understand and tell the difference, but across different manufacturers, it's going to vary. But generally for a, let's say an intermediate skier, somebody who skis blue runs, then I think that this ski boot would be the adequate level of flex just based off of uh, averages. So I am 5'9", 170 pounds, and so for me, it worked pretty well for flex. I would say it's a little bit soft, and I might go to a 110 or a 120, depending on what brand I was using. But let's get into that later. Anyway, so flex, it's about a medium, and I think that for intermediate skiers, the flex, I would say, is, is pretty good. All right, so the last for this ski boot, and this is an interesting thing for this particular ski boot, they quote it as 100. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's where it always gets me with ski boots. I've had such a terrible history with ski boots where I, I, it feels good in the shop, I go out on the ski hill, and after about an hour or two, it feels like somebody is pushing needles into the side of my feet, near the front, in the toe box area, right? So that's right in this area. And there's many of us out there that we have wider feet up front, and it, after a while, that pressure starts to push and push the, uh, the forefoot uh, open a little bit more, and that causes a lot of problems. So I was excited about this ski boot because it advertises that it's 100 last, 100 means across this way, so that's pretty good. That's an, kind of a uh, an average to wider foot, but it goes up to uh, 102. So you can dial it in and out from one, 102 millimeters to 100 millimeters, and that's with this guy here, this front buckle. And you'll notice that on some of the Del Bello boots, they don't have this front buckle, but they've added it to this model so that you can then, and, and it's kind of cut right here. You can you might be able to see that. There's a little cut here, so this this front piece is separate from the tongue right there. So when you tighten this, it pulls this front across and tightens this up a little bit. In theory, that sounds great. In reality, I did not find this really helpful. It sounds great, I know, and, I, and, and that was one of the selling points for sure. But I'm sorry that I don't think it works that great. I think that you get your boot, you put it on, you ski in it, and you, then you take it to a boot fitter. And I'm gonna talk about the boot fitter experience and what they said to me at the end of this video, but really, like, I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's just not gonna work that well, I find, right? If it's too loose, then sure, I think you can use this to dial it in a little bit. I forgot one of my footbeds once when I went skiing in one of my boots, so it was super awkward. I wasn't gonna go home, I wanted to ski, but I ended up dialing this in a little bit to get it a little tighter to try to compensate for not having a footbed in one of my boots, which was really weird to ski that way, just with one. And so it kind of worked for that, but it's not going to work for if you've got a wider footbed or and your, your foot is flaring out and to get, get that dialed in precisely, the boot fitter is gonna be able to do that for you by adjusting the boot where it needs to be adjusted. So, you know, maybe it's gonna work better for you than it did for me, but for me, I can honestly say that uh, 
I just set it and forget it basically on, on my buckle. So once you got it dialed into where you want, uh, that was it. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about is comfort. So comfort on this boot. That is why I bought this boot. I had a Lang 130, which was way too much flex for me. And the reason I had a Lang 130 is because when I bought the boot, I think I conveyed that I was a better skier than I was probably when I was buying the boot. And so the person selling me the boot was just trying to accommodate me, trying to give me the boot that they thought was going to work best for me. And they assumed I was a better skier and needed more, more uh, stiffness than I actually do. So I'm not a 130 in a Lang, it seems like. That was way too stiff for me. But this 100, I think I could move up within the Del Bello family to maybe a, a 110 or 120. But the comfort of this boot, when I, as soon as I tried it on compared to the Lang, the Lang was just killing me. A very low volume boot was the Lang. This is a little bit more volume, a little bit more comfort. So again, as an intermediate skier, I ski mostly blues. Moving from the Lang to this was, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the model of the Lang, but this was like luxury for me. If you're an intermediate skier, you want a good performance boot, but you don't want something that's just going to crush your feet all day and make you miserable. I think this is a really good option for you because I can tell you that while it may not be as responsive for all the expert skiers and advanced skiers out there, it was extremely comfortable, and I would say that it was pretty good performance, right? You, if you want better performance in this family with this sort of shape and things like that, you can get, there's other options in the Del Bello family. But I would say intermediate skier, if, you've, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend a lot of money, because you can get this boot at a very good deal like I did, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, then I think this is a, a very good option. Comfort wise, I would say it, for me, it was about an eight or a nine out of 10. My experience has been, you know, three or four out of 10. And I just hate life at the end of the day when that's going on. So comfort, I'd say this is a very good option. So part of the reason why I think this is a comfortable boot is the Cabrio design. Now, it's a little different some, than some other boots, and you'll see like the buckle angle here, and I'm gonna talk about buckles. It's kinda, kinda weird, it's at an angle, right? And instead of being kinda more horizontal like this. And the reason that that's kinda cool is because it pulls your ankle into the boot a little bit more, I find, and it doesn't crush your upper foot, which I think is a big deal for a lot of us, right? If you've got a high arch, then this could be the boot for you. And, and I do have a high arch, and so it's nice that way. It's not crushing the top of my foot, it's pulling me back into the boot, which is exactly what we want. Okay, let's talk about the bottom of the boot. Now, they advertise this as grip walk, and you can see the, from the green pieces here, it's kind of grippy. Uh, you know what, like, whatever. Um, I would not let that influence you to buy or not buy this boot. Uh, I found that, yeah, sure, maybe it's a little bit grippy. There's a little bit of wear here I can see from where I was walking in the parking lot and things like that with it. Was it any better than non-grip walk? No, maybe, I don't know. Like I would, I didn't notice any difference. I didn't notice my other ski boots being slippery and not grippy, but yeah, I mean, it's a little softer material, so maybe it is, but yeah, so that's the grip walk system. And, and that's advertised quite a bit. A lot of bindings are saying that they accept grip walk, things like that. If you're using it for purposes where you need it to be more grippy, then okay, then this could be good for you. Now, probably the biggest complaint I have on this boot is the walk mode. And I don't care because I didn't buy this boot for walk mode. I bought a resort boot where I'm not really walking that much. I'm walking from my car to the lift, and that's really the extent. And a lot of the mountains I ski, they conveniently allow me to basically ski all the way to my car. So I am not walking very much in this boot, which is great because the walk mode, well, to be honest, it sucks, right? It's not, it's not great. It's got a walk mode, and you can see right here, it's got this little strap connected to the steel thing here, right there, and it looks like it might work. But the first problem you're gonna notice is I can't pull it out, right? So you actually need to put pressure on it 
and lean forward in the boot. Let's see if I can do that without wearing it. Yeah, and then it popped up like that, right? And they advertise a 33% movement, but I, I, it does not feel like 33%. It, it barely feels like there's any difference, I find, when you pull it out of walk mode. And if I'm doing that wrong, then let me know. Oh, it says hike right there. I would not be hiking in this. This is not an AT boot by any stretch of the imagination. This boot is not meant to be hiking in. I don't know why they would say hike right there. Uh, that seems just ridiculous. But it is there. And, and it does, I would say, probably helps a little bit. Uh, I, I don't even bother putting it into that mode anymore because it's such a hassle to put it into this mode. Let's see if I can get it to go back in now. You gotta kind of, if you're wearing it, it's easier. But of course, yeah, there we go, that popped in it. And these are worn in, right? These are not brand new. So when they're brand new, that's even more difficult to do. But I would just say, like, walk mode, not that great. There's other boots out there way better. So if you wanna do any sort of like AT skiing with these, I mean, they don't have the, the Dynafit holes there or anything. So they're not AT boots, of course, right? I get that. But they're also not good for walking. Like they're, I mean, you can walk in them. I had no problem walking in them. They just don't have the movement that you would expect from a walk mode. Or for me, at least, it didn't feel like it had the movement of a walk mode. Did I care? No. I've walked probably a kilometer or two sometimes from my car to the lift to go to the restaurant, stuff like that. I didn't care. Like it was not a deal breaker at all. So when I say it's not good, it, it, if you've got a ski boot for the resort, it's not a huge deal anyway, typically, right? Okay, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that as a huge negative, even though it could be better, right? So anyway, there's that. All right, buckles on this boot, fairly standard buckles, fairly low profile. The steel piece here, nice and thin. These are not, I would, I would say these are not super high quality buckles. So if you go to a higher flex rating, of course, for any boot manufacturer, you're gonna get slightly nicer buckles. But I say slightly because these are these are good buckles. Like I'm totally satisfied with them. They feel good. They work good. They're lightweight. Uh, they've got the micro adjustments on them, so you can tune these to just how you want them. And you do that by just turning this piece here, and then once you've got that dialed in, then you pick the slot that you want to go in. So it's not just picking the slot. You can also turn this, and that's what gives you that micro adjustment, right? So. If, uh, let's say that second slot's not quite right, I just turn it once or twice either way, and it's gonna either loosen or tighten to the desired effect that I want. So that works great. The power strap at the very top, right here, this guy here, I like to use that, and I like to, because that helps pull in my shin and make everything kind of tight up here, which is usually what I'm going for. I think that that could be a little bit better because I would prefer it if it was a little bit higher up but a lot of people will customize the boot uh, with a special power strap that can go on here. So you could do that. I find there's nothing special about this power strap. It could be slightly better, but I would say it's, it's totally adequate. I didn't at any point think, you know, during my day that all oh, that sucks. It's not a good power strap. I just think it would be better if it was a little higher up. So that brings me to some of the other adjustments that you can do with this boot which actually make it quite a versatile boot. One of the things I did was it comes with a spoiler that you can put in the back of the boot and it goes between the liner and the boot shell. And I did that and it actually helps kind of push you forward a little bit more, gives you a little bit more support in your calf area as well. It does feel a little bit tighter I found, so try it out, it comes with the boot in the box you can try it on and see if it helps you at all. I tried it in the house, so I had one boot with the spoiler, one without, just to see kind of how it felt. It felt pretty good, so I put them both in, went skiing with it, and I've left them in ever since. One of the other things that I think is pretty cool about this boot and how you can adjust it is the adjustable ramp angle. So within this boot, there is, of course, a footbed, and there is, of course, a liner, but there's also a little ramp you can put in the heel area that allows you to adjust your ramp angle, which allows you to 
get a different feeling on the ski. So if you are not feeling like you're over the ski, if you're kind of feeling back seat a little bit, and you want to have a little bit more aggressive stance where you kind of feel like you're over the front of the skis a little bit more, you can adjust your ramp angle with this little piece of plastic that you put in there. And I'm just going to grab my other ski boot there and show you how that works. So this is just the shell of the boot. I've taken the liner out. The liner is right here. And inside here, well, actually there's two pieces. First, there's this guy here. And this is like a really thin sole kind of material that I put in there just because my foot size was kind of in between. And this just takes a little bit of the volume and makes it a little bit better fit for me anyway. And that was included as well. And then this is the ramp angle guy. And let me see if I can show you that better. And you can see if it focuses for, for me there. There it is. Oh, no. Are we going to focus? There it is. Okay. So you can see that that's kind of what it looks like. And there's like a little bit of a volume there. And it just kind of lifts my heel up a little bit, which is, which is great. I'm going to put it back in there if I can now. It just kind of clicks in. And it's a little bit loose, but I find that that was not a problem. Lay that guy back in there. And it's as simple as that. You just throw it in and, and then you're good to go. So that's pretty cool, pretty easy. It's in the box, so you can, you can put it in, try it out. Do I like it? Do I not? And I find it's great that way, right? And I put them in. I thought, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm that aggressive as of a skier. I don't know if I'm going to like being so so pushed forward, but it's a very subtle difference, and I think that it, it actually helped my skiing quite a bit. So uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at that. I think that the newer boots coming out on the market are probably going to have some sort of a quick adjustment, perhaps. I think I've seen that somewhere where you can adjust it on the side to actually crank up the... Uh, the ramp angle a little bit. If you're an intermediate skier, kind of moving more towards an expert skier, then I would recommend taking a look at that because it, it definitely did help me. So the cost of this boot, it was very interesting for me because I was so fed up with my other boots because they were so uncomfortable. I just decided, look, I'm just gonna go buy a different pair of boots. I hadn't even sold my uncomfortable boots yet. I just decided, look, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna sell them eventually, but I gotta buy something to ski in right now that is actually comfortable. I went in, tried these on, and I purchased them right away. They were very affordable. I think I got these for about $300. Now, my other boots that were uncomfortable, I bought those for 700 and something crazy dollars, right? So for me, these were a deal. Not only were they very affordable, but they were very comfortable. And based on my, re my reviews on what I looked at out there before making this video, it looks like the cost is pretty similar. You can pay up to $500 for these boots, but if you happen to find the right place at the right time, just over $300 is, I would say, a good deal for this boot. For what you're getting, I, I would say that's... Okay, so those are the features. That's the cost. That's what I think of this boot. I think if you're an intermediate skier and you're looking for something that's not only comfortable, but does pretty good performance, I would suggest you at least try this boot on. If you've never tried on a DeBello boot, then again, I would say if you've got high arches, if you've got a toe box that tends to expand, then this is definitely a boot that you should try on. And I am super happy that I did. Now, let me tell you a little story. Now that you've stayed till the very end, let me tell you a little story about my strategy for ski boots going forward. Now, I used to be of the mind that I could just go out and buy a ski boot, and if it fit me, it fit me. If it didn't, it didn't, and that was the way it went. But that appears not to be the case, at least for me. I think that it was a misconception on my part that my feet were so normal that I could just do that, and that is not the case. A few things that I'm doing. One is I found a good boot fitter that I can trust, that knows what they're doing, and that is going to help me achieve that level of comfort and performance that I need from a ski boot. And that is not going to happen for me by just buying a boot out and putting it on out of the box and going skiing. It's just not going to work because of the shape of my foot. And I do not have an abnormal foot. Now, my foot is not unusual or weird. I think many of you have feet that are very similar to mine. We have an arch, and as we get older, that arch may compress a little bit. 
even as the day progresses, your arch may compress a little bit, and that's going to promote that toe flex or that toe box flex, where you kind of start off like this, and then it does that. And that's what's gonna cause that pain on the side of your foot. For me, it's almost unbearable. So that's where the boot fitter really comes in. I go to the boot fitter, they measure my, my foot, and then they make the adjustments to the front of the boot for me. The recommendation from my boot fitter, and I think it's gonna apply to all of you as well, was go and try on some boots. They highly recommended this particular style of, of boot, this cabrio style because it's not gonna crush the top of my foot. It also works well with people for high arches, not all boots will. So if you've got a high arch, look for a boot that's gonna work that way. If you've got a, a flat foot or a lower arch, ask them what kind of boot is gonna work for that particular type of foot. Also, my, my foot is not a narrow foot. I would say it's at least a medium, maybe a, a, a larger width foot. It actually, over the day, spreads and becomes larger. So, getting a boot that's gonna work well for that. So I said to my, my boot fitter, okay, well, what boot should I buy and then bring it into you to get adjusted? What, what kind of boot do you suggest? So that was definitely one of the styles of boot that he recommended, but he really kind of said this to me. He said, Rob, go in there, try on a bunch of boots and find the one that has the best fit in the heel. Make sure you've got that good heel fit. He said, I can fix the boot if you need to widen it in the front or make any sort of adjustments that way, but get the right size, and then also make sure that the heel fits in there and doesn't move around. He said, after that, let me do my magic and I can make it work for you. And that seems like very good advice to me because he can only do so much with the heel, and yes, he can make it a little bit better fit, make it stick a little bit better, but overall, he's not gonna have as much room to play with the heel if it's too loose. He's just gonna add pads in there, which are going to wear out and over time and, and not be as good. So that's what I'm gonna do. For next season, I'm gonna look at Del Bello. I'm gonna look at the same type of boot, maybe a little bit heavier flex, maybe a 120, but I'm gonna make sure that heel feels solid and locked in, and then I'm gonna take it to him and I'm gonna get that toe box blown out a little bit and get that level of comfort with the level of performance that I want from a ski boot. So. That's it, that's my story, that's the review of this boot. Hopefully that helps you. Again, I highly recommend this boot if you're into comfort and performance and you've got that type of foot that I've described that I've struggled with my whole life. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much, have a great day, see you later.